What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks that I'm watching and looking to trade in the fourth week of April in 2019. We're also going to be talking about some stocks that you guys actually ended up commenting in my video from Friday. So if you did end up commenting, thank you. I'm going to be getting into as many of those as possible in today's video. So before we do hop into this topic, let's talk about what ended up happening in the market last week very briefly. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on the market from last week, just go check out Friday's video, two uploads before this one. I go into uh, deeper depth, but pretty much just taking a look at the S&P 500 here, the SPX, we can see last week, was pretty um flat of a week to be quite frank. We didn't get past the 2019 uh, or the 2915 <clears throat> level here. We failed to get above it here once we got rejected. Here twice we got rejected and the previous 3 days of the market honestly from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because we didn't have Friday open. Actually, yeah, we didn't have Friday. So go check out uh, Thursday's video, not Friday's video. Thursday's video is the market up Day video, but nonetheless, the previous three days of the market, you know, they were kind of flat and pretty bearish, honestly, right? We got rejected here twice. We ended up breaking the support at 2905. And for those of you guys that don't know, these levels were from back in the September month of 2018, right? This 2905 level was a support back towards the end of September. And this 2915 level was a resistance back in the, uh, the uh, August month of 2018, right? Right, so we've been pretty much trading within that level. We broke that support level um, on Wednesday, I believe, and we can see it a bit closer here on the five-day, five-minute. Yep, we broke it on Wednesday, failed to get above it. We popped back up on Thursday. We got rejected again at that 2905 level, pushed to a lower low from the previous, and we tested it again towards uh, the close of the market on Thursday, we pushed down, and now we're pretty much trading right under that 2905 level. So what I'm watching for this upcoming week, guys, is... Are we going to end up breaking out of this level? Are we going to end up getting back towards maybe the 2915 resistance level, which was a resistance from a couple of days ago, right? This is what I'm looking at. But let's say we end up getting rejected here and we start to push and sell off even further, maybe to a lower low if we do get past the 2890 level. You know, that's what we're going to need to see for a pullback on the longer term charts. And if we do get a pullback on the longer term charts here, what we're going to be looking for is a 50 SMA bounce for the continuation of the uptrend. Or if we break the 50 SMA support level here, which has been a support in the past, that could be a sign that the S&P 500 is selling off. So now that we got that out of the way, let's just hop right into it right into it. What am I watching for this upcoming week? And if you guys do enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I really do appreciate every single one of you out there that does end up hitting the like button. So let's get into it, guys. I have the stocks right here on my piece of paper, starting off with Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. And Tesla, I want to warn you guys right now, is reporting earnings on, I believe, the 24th of April. And if we just hover over here, we'll be able to see that. Yup, earnings on 4 slash 2419 after market central standard time. So a lot of people think Tesla stock is going to tank on earnings, right? I've been seeing some news articles they might miss on EPS. You know, this is not looking too good, which is why I'm personally going to wait till after they report earnings to trade Tesla. But what I'm waiting for and what I want to see for potential trade in Tesla, let's say we pop out of the, um, 
you know, 50 SMA resistance and the 180 SMA resistance. And let's say after earnings, maybe we sell off a bit and then we end up popping out. That's going to be what I want to see for a potential entry on a bullish move on Tesla. Because if we're noticing over the past couple of months here, you know, Tesla stock has been getting hammered, right? This is not news. You know, we all know this from 375 down to where we are now in the low 270s. That's literally in a 100 point loss in Tesla stock. And now what we want to see for a reversal is just a break out of the 50 and the 180 simple moving average levels of resistance, guys. And if that does end up happening and we end up seeing a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, this is going to be a huge sign on Tesla in terms of a swing trading signal, right? And that's honestly what I'm waiting for. Once we do, if we do see the break upwards here, maybe into the 280s, and we get that bullish cross on the 180 or on the 50 crossing above the 180, that's going to be a huge sign in my eyes. And let me just draw some resistance levels very quickly for you all so you can get a better understanding here. So we see the support um, at 256, right? We can see another support roughly at about, let's say, $262. And a resistance at about $280. So right now we're trading really in between 263 and 279, 280. So we want to see again a break out of the 280 level of resistance. And if that does end up happening, that's going to be putting us above the moving averages, which is what we need to see for a you know bullish sign on Tesla for an entry point there. So the second one I want to talk about is UWT. And for those of you guys that don't know, UWT is a crude oil ETF. It trades based on slash CL. And whenever slash CL is going up in price, that's when UWT is going up in price as well. So we notice that crude oil has kind of been pulling back. It's kind of been consolidating here over the past couple of trading days, right? If we hop to this 20-day, um, one-hour chart, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We saw this little downwards channel that I did draw out a couple of uh, days ago here. You know, we hit the high at about 64.79. We were trading really perfectly in this channel, and then we got that nice bull bullish move on the 16th of April when we popped out of that channel, but it seemed like we were struggling to still get out of that 64 level of resistance, right? We saw one top, two tops, three tops, and four tops at that level of resistance, and now we're pulling back, seeming like we're holding a new support roughly at about 63.65. Just take a look at this, guys. We got out of that um, downwards trending channel, which is good, right? That's a good first sign that we're pushing up, and now we're trading in this horizontal channel from 63.70 roughly up to about 64.60. So what we need to see now for a bullish move in crude oil, you can probably guess it, is is we need to see a retest at 64.50, which has been a resistance again, and we need to see a pop out of that level and us to climb to the $65 level on crude oil. And at that point, you know, again, UWT is going up whenever crude oil is selling off. At that point, UWT is going to be making a pretty solid move here. So let's see if we can actually draw a channel here on UWT. We pr probably won't be a perfect channel. Yeah, probably not at all. But this is what it's looking like. Ah, that's actually not bad, actually. Not bad at all. But this is what we're seeing, right? We're seeing the support roughly at the 21 area, the resistance roughly at the 22.30 to 22. 40 area here on UWT. And if crude oil does end up popping to the $65 level, UWT should be well above this level of 2240. It should be breaking into the mid 22s, maybe high 22s. And at that point, that's going to be a pretty solid entry in my personal opinion on UWT. And that's honestly where I am watching it for this upcoming week. So as of now, guys, we've just been getting a nice decent recent pullback in UWT and crude oil, which is kind of a given, right? Because this has been uh, an ETF. This has been a future that's been going crazy, right? This combo has been going absolutely bananas here over the past couple of months, literally from $7 
up to $22 in a matter of two, three, four months here. That's a 3X, guys. That's a 3X, and crude oil itself has been going crazy. So this pullback, it's not a significant pullback, but it's a pullback that we need. It's a healthy pullback, and everything that's going up very heavily, right? A pullback in an ETF stock index future that's going up like that is healthy, right? So the third one I want to talk about is Apple, guys. Apple, I feel like I've been talking about this in pretty much every single video because the truth is I have been talking about it in every single video, right? And this is one that I was in last week. For those of you guys that watched my video on Thursday, you saw that I actually sold out, right? I was in at 197 on Apple, ended up selling off roughly at about $204. And this week, I'm actually looking for a re-entry on Apple, right? And let me just draw out some levels for you all. We can see this week, we actually broke out of, uh, let me just erase that very quickly. We actually broke out of the 200 level resistance, it was roughly at this level right here, right? The old support from back in the early uh, days of November. We broke out of that old support, right? It's a resistance once the support's broken like it was back here, making it a new resistance. We broke out of that level and now we're trending in the mid 200s, right? And I want to see, to be honest with you all, I want to see this week a pullback in Apple, right? We're seeing the R size close to a overbought, right? We've been seeing a couple of days here of strong push in terms of Apple. We got that news with Qualcomm. The stock didn't really react that day. I believe that was on this day, right? We popped up a little bit, then we ended up selling off into the 199s. The next day is when it actually popped up very aggressively here from 200 to about $203. And then this is the day that I ended up selling off. So now with these two strong green days that we did have, again, the RSI is a bit overbought here. So ideally, I'm going to wait until after they report earnings here. Most likely, unless we do get an aggressive pullback and a retest, at 200 and I might get in at that point right for a quick little trade but to be honest guys I don't really want to hold Apple you know through their earnings because we're expecting not so great of an earnings report for Apple right iPhone sales you know they're expected to be down again and who knows how the stock's going to react to that and honestly guys I don't want to be in the stock to find out, right? I don't want to be in. I'm most likely, again, unless we do get an interesting entry point this week, I'm most likely just going to wait on Apple stock, but I'm still heavily watching it this week. And if we do get a pullback, let's say on Monday, maybe this could be a nice two, three day swing trade before earnings, me getting in and out before earnings. That could be a potential play here on Apple. So the third or the fourth one we're going to be talking about today is you guys, guys, another one of those ETFs. And this is an inverse ETF. Again, it's inverse is DGAS, ticker symbol DGAZ, and it trades based upon natural gas, right? Slash NG. You see it right here. This is the future, right? Whenever this future is going up in price, you guys is going up in price as well. And one thing you notice about natural gas here is if we're hopping onto, let's say the 30 day chart, you can see this stock or this future rather is extremely oversold on the RSI and it's been battered down over the past couple of days all the way to $2.47, right? And what do we notice here? We're seeing a bearish cross, which isn't too good of a sign, right? We're seeing a bearish cross here and we're noticing the 50 SMA it's acting as a resistance, right? And I said that it's very oversold, right? And by that, I mean, again, the RSI is very oversold and the candlesticks are just pointing down very aggressively, right? So right now, why would I play you gas? You might be asking yourself, right? Well, we notice on natural gas, again, the 50 SMA resistance, it typically, every time it pushes down to a lower low, it typically retests that 50 SMA and really pushes up to 
it a little bit until it, it pushes to a new lower low, right? So if it does that again, let's say it does retest that 50 SMA. Let's say we do end up pushing back up maybe to the 252s, 255 level. You know, this could be a potential play on you guys on the bounce back up, right? And at that point, if we end up getting rejected again, we can flip flop and get into D gas, which is the inverse to you guys, right? And if we're just hopping over here to you guys very quickly, we can see how battered down it has been. And it's really facing the same type of technicals, right? The 50s acting as a resistance. We pretty much get rejected there and sell off aggressively. Then we end up popping back up a little bit, sell off, right? This is something that I'm looking to see, right? Looking to see if it's going to happen. Let's say we end up popping up from where we are now up to 25, where the 50 SMA is, then we get rejected. That's roughly a 7% move there, right? This is one that I'm watching, again, I'm watching DGAS as well. These go hand in hand, and I typically flip in and out of these, you know, when I am trading. So, you guys, natural gas, very important in my eyes for this week. Disney is another one that I'm going to be watching, DIS. I talked about this a couple of days ago, and it seems like, to be quite frank with you all, we're not getting a pullback here in Disney, right? The market wants to push Disney higher, right? We noticed that it popped up aggressively. This is the day that they released more details on their streaming service. The stock went up 12%, 13% on that day, I believe. And I was expecting a pullback, right? We can still potentially get a pullback, right? We're still in the early days here of this news. You know, it's only been a couple of days here, so we might be consolidating to a pullback here. That would be ideal in my eyes for an entry. But again, based on the technicals, the data that we are seeing right now, we're not getting a pullback in Disney whatsoever based on what I'm seeing now, right? Am I saying it's not going to happen? No, I actually want it to happen. But based on what I'm seeing, you know, I don't really see it happening. So ideally, you know, if we're looking on the three-year chart, we're noticing a resistance on Disney roughly at about 115 to 120, right? 115 here, a bit lower at 112, you know, here at about 120. So if we were to pull back on Disney, maybe to the 125 level, 126, like I've been saying over the past couple of days, um, you know, in my videos, that would be a point in time where I would be entering into Disney. But where we are right now, you you know, this is not really my strategy where I'm I'm putting money at, in a stock at their all-time highs, right? That kind of scares me because you're pretty much betting, guys. Literally, you're betting, especially if you're short-term trading, swing trading, which is my goal right now with Disney if I were to enter. You're pretty much betting that the stock is going to continue to push to all-time highs, all-time highs, you know, throughout your swing trade, which in my personal opinion, you know, with Disney, the way it's looking, overbought, even on the three-year chart, that is kind of risky, right? I think there's more spots to put uh, my money, but if we do get that pullback, which is more of my style, I like getting in on a nice little pullback, and as it confirms the reversal to the upside, I'm going to be putting money into Disney 100%, and I've been saying here, guys, on the channel, Disney is a stock in terms of long-term investing that I want to build a pretty big position in when the price, when the valuation of the company does get to the right levels, right? I'm still kicking myself, guys, believe me. I'm kicking myself that I didn't get into Disney at 100 bucks back when the stock market was melting a couple of months ago. If I were, I'd be up 30% roughly right now in the position. But you win some, guys. You lose some. You can't get mad over what you cannot control, right? I mean, I could have controlled it. I could have bought in. But... I didn't. I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't buy in here. I should have, but it's okay. It's going to pull back again in due time. It's going to pull back, and that is where I'm going to build a position. So a net ticker symbol A N E T. This is actually one of the ones my one of my subscribers ended up calling out. Arista Networks. I don't. I know nothing about this stock in terms of a fundamental basis, but in terms of technicals here. It's looking okay, right? This is another one that's at a pretty high level in terms of price. This might be the all-time high. Let's take a look. Yup. It's the all-time high in terms of ticker symbol AN. 
ET. But what I am liking here, based on what we got last week in terms of uh, price action, is we hit an all-time high at 330, but we got that little pullback that I like to see in terms of entering on a swing trade, which opened up about 3% margin. And what we're seeing, guys is it's maintaining the 50 SMA that's been a support over the past couple of weeks here. And we're even seeing a green bar, green candlestick starting to form on top of that 50 simple moving average, which is a very good sign, right? This is a sign that it wants to continue the push. So what I'm going to be watching, you know, on Monday is just that, right? Are we going to continue the push up? Maybe are we going to be up pre-market hours into the 324 level, maybe 325? That's going to be a confirming factor that we need to see that, okay, maybe a net wants to push up even more to the 330s again, maybe even higher. Maybe it wants to continue the uptrend. And that is going to be a good uh, entry point in my personal opinion. But let's say it breaks this level of the 50 SMA. That's going to be a huge no-no on a net. I am not going to be watching it at that point because that is a break of pattern completely. So square stock is the next one. Ticker symbol S. Q, good old square stock, guys. We've been talking about this one. Uh, actually, we haven't been talking about this one, but this is one that we used to talk about a lot when it was reversing to the upside here. But the technicals right now on square, to be completely honest with you all, what I am seeing, it's not looking too good, right? Let's just draw some levels very quickly so we can get an understanding of what is happening here. So right now on square, Seems like we're trading in this horizontal channel from about 70 bucks up to about $78, right? There's a clear resistance here at 78. We popped above it a little bit to 82, ended up falling back down, retesting that 70-ish level of support, popped back up, retested the 70 level, popped back up, retested it. That's exactly where we are right now. So what I'm waiting for in square that could potentially be a decent play here is if we maintain this level of $70 and we slowly start to truck back up maybe to the mid 70s this can be a decent bounce back play because what we're seeing here is it's a bit oversold right it's a bit oversold but the thing that I'm kind of being discouraged about here is it seems like a falling knife, right? We've yet to get the confirmation that we are consolidating here and pushing up which is why on Monday right I'm going to be watching and waiting to see where we're going to open on the stock. Are we going to open up in the 71 level, maybe 7150, which would be a very good sign that it is bouncing from that level of support? Or if we break that level, right, if we start to trend into the 69 level, that's not going to be too good. That means we're breaking the support and we're heading down. And to be quite frank with you all, you know, we are seeing a bit of a bearish cross here on square, which is the 50 crossing below the 180 in terms of SMAs. And this is a bit worrisome in my personal opinion as of now. And they are reporting earnings here on the 1st of May. You can see it here. Earnings conference call on 5-1-19 at 4 p.m. Uh, what's it? Mount Mountain Standard Time, Central Standard Time. So... I'd be careful about that one. But if we do end up holding 70, maybe this could be a nice little bounce back play, especially since it's oversold. So let's get into the last three here. <coughs> Ticker symbol MDB. So MDB is another one that a subscriber ended up calling out. And let's take a look at um, some drawing tools very quickly so we can draw out some levels of support and some levels of resistance. So you can tell this stock, I don't know anything about the stock to be completely honest with you, but it did. It does seem like it popped very high on an earnings report, right? We can see they reported on the 13th of, uh, yeah, the 13th of March, the stock went from 100 bucks to 155 in the matter of a couple of weeks, which is absolutely unbelievable. But from there, we're noticing a very bearish move, right? Lower highs here, we're pushing down. And now we're at a level of support at the 50 or the actually the 180 SMA here that's been a level of support over the past couple of months. So this is a very tell uh, telling sign right here on whether or not 
this is going to be a good trade, right? Very simple. Are we going to maintain this level or are we going to break right below it and maybe test 108, which is the next level of support, which was an old resistance back from February? You know, that's honestly what I'm watching here, right? Not much to say, but we are oversold on the RSI, and it seems like the 50 SMA is pointing down. We might be getting a bearish cross here in a little bit, which is a bit worrisome, but as of now, it does look like we're holding it, but eh, it's a bit of a falling knife, so I'd be careful. I'd wait to see, you know, are we going to maintain this? Are we going to get back to the 130 level? But even if we do, guys, this is a resistance as well. 130, old support. We broke that old support making it a resistance so excuse me i'd be careful on that one so the last two i actually got a couple of requests on goldman sachs goldman sachs is looking pretty good right now right we got a break of resistance here right at about a hundred or two hundred rather and three dollars we're getting a bullish cross here the 50s crossing above the 180 but the key thing i'm seeing here is that break of resistance guys this is pretty attractive right the 200 dollars level has been a resistance really for the whole entire year of 2019 right resistance 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 and we broke out of it actually a couple of days ago on the 12th of April to $211. We got the pullback and we actually retested that 50 SMA as a support, bounced above it, and then broke out of the resistance again, which is very, very good now, guys. And we're noticing we're holding the resistance as a new support, heading into the market close on Thursday, which is another good sign. So there's a lot of different good signs here on Goldman Sachs, making it honestly one of my most favorite ones that I'm covering in today's video, right? There's a lot of margin of profit on it. You know, the high is 245 here. We're at about 206 now. Now that gives us a 15% potential for profit. We broke those resistance levels. Now all we need to see is are we going to maintain this level and are we going to potentially break into the two tens again on Goldman Sachs? That is what I'm watching. But as of now, again, this is one of my favorite ones and I am definitely looking to trade this one this upcoming week. So the last one is KHC, guys. And you might be telling yourself, Kraft Heinz, that one has been getting slaughtered, right? And you might know this stock because Warren Buffett lost his butt on it, to be quite frank. You know, it fell, I believe, like 30%, was it, or something like that? 30% on an earnings call. But we can see over the past couple of months, it's been not budging below $30, right? It's been holding that level. And we're about to see a very interesting play here or a very interesting potential move here over the next couple of days. And let me explain what I'm talking about, right? We can see these candlesticks are finally meeting the 180 SMA resistance here, which has been a resistance for the past couple of months, guys, because again, this stock has been getting hammered, right? We're seeing a potential cross of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA, which is a bullish sign. And we're noticing a very slow break of the candlesticks out of that level of resistance. So Kraft, there's a lot of bad news around it, right? This is one of those stocks that they miss bad on earnings. They cut their dividend, right? Which a lot of people freaked out about, which is why it sold off aggressively because this is one of those value companies, not so much value anymore, in my personal opinion, but people viewed this as a value company, as a company that is a cash cow company where you get dividends from it, right? This is not a growth company whatsoever. And once they cut that dividend, that scared everybody away because people are relying on on this stock for income, right? A lot of older people, they live off their dividends, right? And that's worrisome, right? They started selling the shares, the stock tanked, right? And now we're noticing, again, that potential cross, but still be careful because, again, there's a lot of bad news around this. But, hey, if we start to pop into the mid-30s, right, 35, we start breaking this overall 30 to $32 level here that we've been stuck at, we get that bullish cross, this could be a decent rebound stock, but I'm most likely going to stay away from this, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on it. Ticker symbol KHC. So that is all for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it supports me and supports the channel in general, and it just tells me that you guys enjoy the content here 
on the channel. If you want to drop a comment and let me know what you're trading this week, feel free to do that and I'll get back to you. And I have two links down below in the comment section or the description rather, one of them being the Discord group chat, the other one being the Facebook group. If you're not already in there, get in there. They're 100% free. And if you're new to the channel and you stuck this far and you're not subscribed already, what are you doing? Hit that red button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video and I make videos a lot, guys, pretty much every single day with Saturdays being an exception. Sometimes I do upload on Saturdays, but if you're into stock market, investing trading stock news me breaking down the markets giving my personal opinion on different stocks this is the channel for you so i appreciate everybody out there watching have a good easter if you're watching this easter is most likely over for you so if you did celebrate easter today i hope you guys did have a very good easter i'll catch you all in the next video have a good one peace out